is Marshall Abraham's at long last. After four months, I can only apologise for having been so long away. I've been moving house, and um, as anybody who's ever done that will know, one can't think of anything else. Anyway, here we are with The Royal Law. Um, this came about as the result of a conversation by email with one of Ross Broadstock's supporters, Tally Essin, who gave me two links to watch. They are below, and believe me, they are required watching. In the second, the man on the podium, Dave Witcher, is holding up a book. I was inspired to pause and see if I could read the title. I could, and I bought a copy. It is The Royal Law, written just over 20 years ago by a solicitor, L. L. Blake. He seeks to show that the only law of this land, whether Scots or English, is derived from the sovereign's compact made with God at her coronation, in this case the Queen. On page 61, um, he says, One should also recall the true meaning of religion. Uh, Skeet, my constant companion in his great etymological dictionary, reminds us that religens is the opposite of negligens, or lack of care. In other words, religion should exemplify God's care of man, and therefore the state. If a religion has gone wrong, it is because man has gone wrong. Um, I'm going to read three paragraphs from page 15 now. Uh, the coronation service is where the divine law is placed above the law of the state, acknowledged and reverenced. It reminds us of the source of all our law in truth and in justice. We should not forget the words in which are conveyed the truth which inspires our common law. The question is whether this fine language can continue into the next coronation when it comes, given the sorry propensity of the church to desecrate its own liturgy. Fortunately, the oath by a new monarch committed to a lifetime's obedience is embedded in an Act of Parliament, the Coronation Oath Act of 1681. His Royal Highness Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, loves the English language and is unlikely to make any major changes to the service. And I should add that the, um, the Prince of Wales is also patron of the Prayer Book Society. At his first marriage in 1981 and at his second, a form of the Prayer Book service, marriage service was used as it was at Prince William's wedding. He is a vocal and eloquent supporter of both the prayer book and the King James Bible, a copy of which the Queen kissed at her coronation. Um, it is my opinion that the factions seeking to undermine the constitution of this country use the late Princess of Wales to undermine the Prince's standing in our affections because of his support for these bulwarks of our common law, Anybody of my age can remember when he was universally loved and welcomed and when he used his severance pay from the Royal Navy to set up the Prince's Trust, he was laying the foundations of an institution that has done a great deal more to help disaffected British youth, whether civic or native, than any department of government. If I'm right, those factions have done the late Princess of Wales quite as much damage as they have the Prince of Wales. The Queen has the right to be consulted in matters of governance. She has the right to encourage and the right to warn. Yes, the Queen's signature is what passes a law onto the statute books, but this is the compact be between Crown and people sworn to us by the Queen, our undoubted Queen, at her coronation. Watch this clip from that magnificent and profoundly moving service to see her curtsy to all four corners of her kingdoms as she takes her oath to serve us, as we swear to serve her. Now, the Archbishop moves to the theatre for the ceremony of recognition when he calls upon the people to acknowledge that they are in the presence of their rightful queen. There await him the great officers, the Lord Chancellor to the left, the Lord Great Chamberlain, the Lord High Constable, and the Earl Marshal. They stand in line before the throne.
Her Majesty moves across the theatre. She is preceded by Garter, King of Arms. First, the Archbishop will speak to the East, to all those gathered here on each side of the sanctuary. I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? Now, with the great officers, the Archbishop moves to the south, faces the Duke of Edinburgh, the other Princes of the Blood, and the massed assembly of the Peers. Sir, I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted Queen, Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? Now, the Archbishop turns to the west side of the theatre, looking down the full length of the abbey over those in the choir and the nave. Sirs, I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen, Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? And then to the north, where sit Peeresses. Sir, I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? God save me, Yes, that's right. The Queen curtsies to us, the people. I cannot say how deeply this moved me when I first saw it. And if the form of the coronation service reproduced in the royal law is complete, those curtsies are not written into the service. The Queen is only required to show herself unto the people. Um, 
when her father, King George VI, was crowned, he bowed twice to all four corners of the um, compass, north, south, east and west. Um, these curtsies, her anointing under cover of a cloth of gold, her kissing of the King James Bible, are all evidence of the crown as one of the twin pillars in ma ma mighty, majestical operation. We, her people, are the other pillar. We are the strength of this country without whom the crown cannot function, cannot establish. Establish is literally to make stable. The crown sanctions and channels the strength of our will. The Queen's signature makes our will real and concrete. I think it is therefore incumbent upon us, her subjects, and subject simply means individual, does not mean that she subjects us to anything. It is incumbent upon us, her individuals, to will the right things, therefore. And what are the right things? Those that do no harm and those that enable us to live in freedom, treating our neighbours as we would wish them to treat us. Judges, the police, jurors, all used to take a form of oath to the crown. These oaths have been done away with, as has the medical profession's Hippocratic oath to do no harm, and I think I know why. If a morally and spiritually binding oath has not been taken, it cannot be broken. No law has then been broken and no treason committed. This is casuistry of a high and offensive order, and it is worth noting that it is treason, literally a betrayal of trust, to break such an oath, and treason is still a hanging offence. I'm sure we can all think of one or two people we'd like to see swinging from a gibbet. Um, I'm indebted to Taliesin for uh, alerting me to the um, to these two links. Uh, the bravery of these two men is beyond compare. Uh, also, this book, The Royal Law, which is, um, I can't say how important this is. Um, all law, basically, is derived between uh, from the compact between sovereign and God. And that compact is compounded of what is right and proper and true and just. Anything else is man's tinkering. Uh, the Royal Law is available from both Amazon and Abe books at a little less than the cover price. Uh, the ISBN is below. I'm sorry this is on such a um, an important and rather solemn matter, but the, the Jubilee has, if you like... Um, caused a lot of things to become a, a great deal clearer uh, in people's minds, I think, mine not least of all. And the one thing that I was conscious of uh, watching the Queen's Jubilee is just what a bulwark of strength, stability, trust, continuity and consistency, honesty, integrity, loyalty and service this wonderful woman is. And um, on that note, I think I better stop. Thank you so much and thank you for sticking with me. It's lovely to see the numbers going up, even though I haven't done anything for such a long time. And welcome to all um, old friends and new subscribers alike. I hope to be doing a few more videos from, from now on. Thank you again and see you soon. Goodbye.